What is going on, Nev Nation, and welcome back to another video. Today, guys, we have our final episode of Undervalued Pokemon Cards. This has been one of the most popular series on the channel and has thoroughly helped a lot of people out there to find those cards and or products that have completely flown under the radar. And we are going to go out with a bang. I reached out to the community to ask you guys what cards and or products you think are currently undervalued. And you guys hit another home run on this one, and we have a lot to get through. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And the first one comes to us from that lab, Frank, who says, Evo Skies and Chilling Rain, I feel, are undervalued. Lots of great individual cards in the set. I would say for the Sword and Shield era, uh, Evolving Skies especially is right up there among the best sets to be released in this entire lineup. Uh, Chilling Rain wasn't as popular when it was initially released, but it is gaining in popularity. And the thing that I have to give to both Evolving Skies and Chilling Rain is that the singles prices on these cards have held fairly steady when compared to a lot of other other sets released during the Sword and Shield era, uh, more specifically something like uh, Vivid Voltage. Those prices have really taken a hit, but Evolving Skies and Chilling Rain have held fairly steady in the singles prices. And I think that Evolving Skies, especially with the alternate art cards, a lot of fantastic uh, cards in that set list. I think if you're going to look at holding on to sealed products from the uh, Sword and Shield era, Evolving Skies is probably going to be one of your best bets and chilling rain i think is right up there as well again not a super popular set when it was initially released but a lot of people are looking to get back to get their hands on chilling rain now that uh, we are quite a few months removed from its initial release. So I think this is a fantastic option here. So a big shout out to that lab, Frank. Next up, we have Danny Nguyen who says, I have not recently checked prices, but I think the character secret rares in Cosmic Eclipse are underrated. And I totally agree with him on this one, especially now that we're starting to see the resurgence of character rares in Brilliant Stars. I think that a lot more people are gonna be looking at years past and looking at other character rare cards. And there's a great lineup in Cosmic Eclipse. You have Pikachu and the like. So I think that the prices on these will probably start to see an upward trend as more and more people start to get into Brilliant Stars, break into them, really appreciate the character rares. They're gonna look at these cards from years past and I imagine you'll probably see the, uh, the prices on these start to move up. Next up on our list, we actually had two members of the community that mentioned these products. We had Paradise Josh, and we also had James Ebon, who mentioned the Japanese Premium File Collections. And I actually talked about these in a previous undervalued series. So if you guys want, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll put that video up here in the eye. But these have seen such a resurgence in popularity. They're so cool. They feature fantastic Pokemon from the Neo era, which Neo, in my opinion, is the best era of Pokemon cards, and these are no exception. They all come in different folders. There's Premium File 1, 2, and 3, and they all feature different types of Pokemon. And really getting your hands on any of these, whether sealed or the individual cards, I think are a fantastic option. So if you want a little bit more of a detailed explanation on these, go ahead and check out that video. But again, Premium File Collections, graded and or sealed products, I think are gonna be a fantastic addition to your collection and or your investment portfolio. A few other suggestions that we'll go ahead and run through here really quickly before we get to my big picks that the members of the community chose. The first one here, Legendary Collection is underrated. This was brought to us by Mark Fisher. I think that Legendary Collection isn't so much undervalued anymore. I think that a lot of people are really starting to appreciate Legendary Collection. It was kind of like the base set three. And I remember when it first came out, it really wasn't that popular, but that was actually one of the first videos that I watched here on YouTube when I was getting back into Pokemon in early 2016 from Gem Mint Pokemon, and he was opening up packs of Legendary Collection, and that really gave me the impetus to really dive into Pokemon cards once again. So Legendary Collection was sort of my reintroduction to Pokemon, and I think a lot of people really look on those fondly. So the prices really are starting to creep up on those, but I think that there's still opportunity out there 
for legendary collection sealed products or individual cards. Next up, we have Paridum Productions, who says, probably evolving Sky's booster boxes, but ETBs are better, in my opinion, to keep sealed. I think that the ETBs, if you're gonna go down that route, I think he's right in saying that the ETBs are probably a better investment long-term, and I think at the cream of the crop of ETBs would be Pokemon Center exclusive Elite Trainer boxes. Those are really like the first edition print runs of Elite Trainer boxes, and then we get the regular ones that are released to all the other resellers out there. So I think if you're gonna go for ETBs, for Evolving Skies, for sealed products, get those Pokemon Center exclusive Elite Trainer boxes. Next up, we've got the old card shop. Maijai and Boss non-TCG cards are still slept on big time. Our good friend Jake from Pokenomics is actually very well versed in the Maijai cards. And uh, I think that these are fantastic options to dive into. Still very much unknown to the average collector or investor out there. And I think these would be a great opportunity to jump on. Next up, we've got Manny Simone cards, Pokemon soccer promos, the biggest sport in the world combined with one of the biggest franchises ever. Yeah, really a no-brainer here. The futsal cards, all of these different types of Pokemon cards tied to, again, the most popular sport in the world. You really got two very good dynamics going together here, and I think that Manny definitely is on to something in, uh, in really putting these two together. Next up, we got Jake Baca, base set first edition non hollow rares, Beedrill, Doug Trio, etc. Pretty much the same prices as the common and uncommon cards, but way more rare. Yeah, it's it's really interesting to see that, how a lot of the non-hollows, uh, even the first edition non-hollows, are so cheap still. And I think that's mainly because people are still focusing on the hollow cards, kind of putting the non-hollows uh, to the wayside. But yes, I think that this is certainly an opportunity and uh, you're, you're basically getting the same card, uh, perhaps, you know, somewhere of the same rarity um, just just not at the exorbitant price point and especially when they're you know very much comparable to common and uncommon cards with their price definitely a big opportunity here next up is Lamachti Palashki hope I got that right complete first generation singles yeah so pretty much what we've been talking about with the last suggestion here I think that, again, a lot of the uh, singles cards are still a lot in that first generation of sets that are highly looked over or that people are just focusing on the big ones, Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise, um, Hollows, first editions, but there's still a lot of cards within the first generation of Pokemon sets that I think are certainly being slept on. Next up, we got Waka uh, Wal Waluconis. Man, you guys are really, uh, really getting to me with these, these YouTube YouTube names. Uh, he says the Marnie Milk Carton. No question here that this is a product that if you were able to get your hands on early on, you have a fantastic sealed product on your hands. I do not see Pokemon reprinting these products in any time in the near future, if at all. So Marnie Milk Cartons, I think, are going to be a great product to keep sealed. And there's just so much expected value in that product that it's really going to carry it forward for years and years to come. Next up is NV Shines, the Charizard uh, number 076 uh, SP Pro card this is the Chinese competition promo I think this is kind of like a lower tier trophy card really when you when you look at it this is an opportunity to get into somewhat of a lower tier trophy card without the exorbitant price point and it's still very very rare very exclusive as well so another great option here from Envy Shines with the uh, Charizard Chinese promotion card all right, so let's go ahead and get into my top picks that members of the community suggested. The first one is from Hillen Darris. He's always coming up with great options here. On all these types of videos last year, I kept bringing up the Pokemon Tops Chrome cards, and I haven't been wrong. No, you haven't. Tops Chrome cards still uh, undervalued, and they're still creeping up in value, just as he says here. Uh, but a good one, the one that I want to talk about here is uh, I think you should cover the 2002 era Japanese Battle E-Series packs and cards that were made for the e-reader. I was scooping up those packs for $20 each during the peak of the Pokey Hype, and now there are barely any on the market. When I do see them pop up, they sell for around $50 to $60, but for vintage packs that are a Japanese exclusive, 
I'd say they've been a sleeper. Yeah, so if you guys haven't checked these out, this was the uh, E-Series era where you had the barcode on the cards itself and you could swipe those in your Pokemon, or excuse me, in your Game Boy Advance and you could really get those Pokemon on there. Now, it didn't work very well. It, to be honest, it worked uh, like crap. But nonetheless, this is a great generation of Pokemon cards. And these E-Series Battle Packs, especially with them being a Japanese exclusive type of item, I think this is certainly something you want to keep on your radar. You guys have always heard me talk very highly of Japanese cards. And I think that as we move on, more and more people, especially investors, are going to be moving towards Japanese exclusive products because we don't see those outside of their home country. And this is uh, a really good example here of items that we just didn't get elsewhere. And so I think there's still a great opportunity here for these Japanese Battle E-Series packs and one you better keep your eye on. My next top pick from the suggestions from the community comes from Charlie Hoffman. Golden Secret Rare Mega EX cards from the beginning of the XY era. The Golden Secret Rare Mega EX cards are high-end cards with a fan favorite Pokemon like Charizard, Lucario, and Gengar that are only inside three different sets, Flash, Fire, Furious Fist, Phantom Forces. Uh, when it pulled my favorite Pokemon Lucario as a golden secret rare Mega EX from a Furious Fist pack a year ago, it felt like I just won the golden ticket to a premium card uh, that I could remember as part of my collection forever. So yes, I think that definitely these cards would fit in that echelon of ones to keep on your radar. And again, they were only featured in three different sets. So it's not like we saw these, um, you know, reverberated again and again through future sets. It was really just these three. And there are a lot of really popular Pokemon, as he named here. We have Charizard, Lucario, Gengar. All of these cards are one that uh, I think have a lot of potential as we move forward. You know, golden cards, secret rare cards, uh, really popular Pokemon. These are all terms. These are all things that have proved very successful for Pokemon cards for their value as well as their popularity in the long term. All right, guys, so here we are. This is my top pick from the suggestions from the community. And this one, I have to say, I was completely unaware of. But once I was made aware of this, I immediately went out and put as many offers in on eBay as I possibly could. So let's jump into this one. It comes to us from Urbez Lopez. So big shout out to Urbez. He's actually a member of Poke Realm as well. So a big shout out to you, Urbez. I highly recommend going over the Japanese movie 10th Anniversary Premium Collection Set that comes with 12 cards in a black binder. They have beautiful art holo cards like Lugia, Mewtwo, and Mew, and other fan favorites. There is only three videos on YouTube that I can find that talk about them. It's a unique piece that I never hear anyone talk about and would love to hear your thoughts on it. So let me give you a little bit of background on these products. So this was released to commemorate the 10th Pokemon movie release in Japan, which I believe would have been the equivalent of Rise of Darkrai. Um, and it came in a special card album uh, containing 11 cards with central Pokemon from the previous nine movies. Space for a 12th was included for a card available to the first uh, 4.2 million patrons of the 10th movie. Those attending the 2007 World Hobby Fair had the opportunity to purchase the set in advance before its theatrical and commercial release. This is such a cool item. I love the binder. Anytime that we've seen a commemorative type of set like this, they have just absolutely exploded in value and popularity. And I love how it features these Pokemon from the previous movies up to that point. So we're really moving into the Diamond and Pearl era with this type of product the artwork and and everything featured on them on the cards itself really speak to that generation from diamond and pearl this is such a cool item and like i said if we go back we look at milestone type of pieces commemorative type of pieces especially things like this that come in its own unique packaging its own unique binder they have just done 
so, so well. And when you look out on the open market, I mean, a lot of these are going from anywhere from like 120 to like $220. And that is a huge value. And then you look at the cards inside here, you look at the graded cards. I mean, just the Lugia alone goes for about $150 in a PSA 9. It's just huge expected value in here. So I imagine after this video is released, you're probably gonna see the prices on these really start to shoot up. So I would recommend getting out there and starting to scoop up these items because again, I am so happy that I found out about this and that's one of the great things about doing this channel is being able to connect with so many of you out there and really be able to expand my own knowledge on all of the Pokemon products that exist you know, in this wide echelon and it is so vast and again, that's one of the reasons why I do these videos that I've done them over the last year and a half uh, because it not just not only helps you but it also helps me as well to really expand Man, my awareness on the Pokemon hobby and all of the products and or cards that exist in this hobby. So guys, I hope you have truly enjoyed this undervalued Pokemon card series. There is, I, I think now like six, seven, eight episodes on this. So make sure that you go back and watch all of the previous episodes on here because there's a lot of great products that we've talked about in each of these episodes that I know will make you a better collector and a better investor. Other than that, guys, I will see you all next time. My name is PokeNav. I'm here to help you navigate the world of Pokemon one video at a time, and I will see you all in the next video.